Welcome back, Dude with the Food, to another episode of Video Game World Tours, a series where we slow down and soak in a game's environment. Today's tour takes us to the massive, expansive world of LEGO Island. Oh, sorry, did I say the game was massive? I meant to say it's the furthest possible thing from massive. This was a game I played a lot as a kid. And even back then, when my kid brain liked to make everything seem bigger than it actually was, this island felt small. In these videos, I'll usually do a thing where I poke and prod at the world as if it were real. Like in the Super Mario Sunshine video, we looked at Noki Bay as if it were a real place NPCs lived in. And with a bit of imagination, you can kind of say, yeah, the Noki could feasibly live here. I can't do that with LEGO Island. This game won't let me treat its world seriously and ask questions like that. It fundamentally rejects any sense of appealing to our definition of reality. In fact, it serves this game pretty well. It's almost like what a kid would build if they were making their own little Lego island out of sets they have. A police station, a hospital, a pizzeria. It's quaint, playful. The developers weren't concerned with whether or not these LEGO people could theoretically live on this island. They just wanted to have buildings that could suit the gameplay. Speaking of which, let's check out the central part of the island. Most of your playtime will be around this area. There's the gas station, the pizzeria, the beach, the racetrack. At each of these areas you can take on missions. But we're not interested in the gameplay here. What are these places like? Let's start with the pizzeria. Pepperoni, the pizza delivery dude, the dude with the food, works here. It's a pretty interesting establishment. They have no seating for potential customers. All there is are these umbrellas, which are generally near seats in places like this, but there's no chairs. There's this building. It's a bank? I'm assuming that's what this little dollar sign means. I always remembered this because it didn't serve any purpose, from what I can remember at least. It actually annoyed me because it cut off a potential pathway connecting these two roads. Would have been a lot faster to get around without it. I was just an impatient kid though. This building is fine. These streets see a lot of foot traffic. This is a game that doesn't want you to go 10 seconds without seeing some wacky happening. There's always some random event going on or characters spouting out nonsense. All quiet on the eastern side of the island. Well, if you overlook the flying Legandos and, and the Lego Bobs in the park, and well, well, of course, Mrs. Post Parrot is stuck in a car again, and <laughs> old Pup Dog is at it again, chasing Joaquin the dog, and well, well, Nubby won't stop talking about the mysteries of life, and actually, and, well, it's not very quiet at all. It gives the environment this chaotic vibe. It almost feels like the island itself has this aura that turns people crazy and brings inanimate objects to life. If you click someone, they'll do a backflip and change their headpiece. People explode if you run into them. Clicking the bank from earlier makes it spin around like crazy. If you ride a vehicle and get off while it's still moving, the vehicle will continue without you. And it follows all the paths as if someone were riding it. There's so many things to stimulate your brain and make you question reality. It's overwhelming. In a fun way. Say, let's go racing. I've always wanted to be a race car driver. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines please and go! Jesus! Let's look at these environments, considering you're supposed to speed past them usually. First room has some nice cave vibes going on. Even some spooky ghosts to set the atmosphere. Look at how pixely this wall texture is. You almost don't even notice the dithering when driving by quick. Up close though, it's real chunky. Into the next room, wow, that's certainly something. Skeletons running on top of giant pizzas in a cave. Let's just move on before we try to make sense of that and fry our brains. 
This is kind of gruesome. Lego people were turned into some signage. They don't seem to mind it, though. Excuse me, fellas. Ooh, I like this tunnel. I think the lack of textures on the walls and ground really do it for me. It looks like these are just polygons with the raw colors. The fake lighting from the ceiling to the floor and spots is done really well. This game really knows how to keep you on your toes. We're in a massive dome with flying sharks and a giant skeleton. I don't even know what to say to all this. Oh god, there's more sign people. I don't want to think about them anymore. Fire trucks in the next room? Sure, why not? A giant octopus. Okay, I don't want to be a race car driver anymore. Let's go back to the surface. I like this long stretch of road on the north side of the island. Just staring off at this beautiful water texture. It's peaceful. On the eastern side of the island is more of the same. Of note is the Brixter's prison cell. I could do a whole thing here trying to make sense of the LEGO Island justice system and how they only have one cell for potential criminals, but LEGO Island doesn't deserve that kind of scrutiny. The Brickster and his little jail cell are perfect the way they are. There's this dirt path behind the gas station. I remember thinking this was weird back in the day, I don't know why. It's the only path like it on this side of the island and it zigzags all the way up to the information center. Kind of annoying to walk through, but whatever, moving on. Something I don't think I really appreciated about this game as a kid, but something I really appreciate now, are the pre-rendered backgrounds. You go into some of the buildings, and they have these beautifully rendered scenes. I love stuff like this. I'll talk about it every chance I get in these videos. To me, it's one of those things that you feel really strongly about, but you can't put into words. Like, why do I love this? Is it the lighting? Is it the slight blurriness compared to the 3D objects rendered in real time? One thing I do know is that it feels very 90s. Pre-rendering scenes was a technique that saw widespread use at the time, so I associated with that era. There's another aspect that solidifies that 90s feel, but we'll talk about that in the next section. Let's visit the Information Center. This is where the game starts actually, and because of that, there's some deep sense of nostalgia here. Every time you boot up the game, you're put in this room to pick a save and a character to play. This is home to me. Let's check out the other rooms in the building. I love this. I think the lighting really does play a part in why I like the pre-rendered scenes in this game. It's like there's two different realities. Outside, everything is flatly lit. No shadows on the ground. There's not a lot of texture work. It feels artificial. In pre-rendered background land, the lighting is almost exactly what you'd see in real life. Like you could theoretically build this as a Lego set, and the lighting might look pretty darn close to this. An interesting distinction though, is that outside, everything is crisp. Lines are rendered every frame and are perfectly straight. But in backgrounds like this, it's kind of blurry. You feel that disconnect between the real-time rendered and the pre-rendered. Like look at that. You can see the reflection in the door of what's supposed to be behind you. It's the map from the room you start the game in. No way you'd be seeing that in real time in a game from the 90s. I want to shout out one more spot before we move on. The top of the information center has this little lookout where you stare out at the ocean. Something about the music here, mixed with this perfectly empty view, it's mesmerizing. I've ended both sections in this video so far, gazing out upon the ocean. I think it's because I've become so familiar with this island as a kid, I yearn to see more of this world. I like to cover some familiar and unfamiliar spots to satisfy both people that haven't played the game and people that have. You get to see a lot of what the game has to offer that way. 
But if you've played LEGO Island, you are most likely intimately familiar with every single spot in the game. I hate to spoil it, but I'm probably not going to show you any places you don't remember if you played this. It's too small a game for that. But some areas are less familiar than others, like the western side of the island. I've bitten my tongue on the game's music, but no longer will I hold back. I'm going to gush about the LEGO Island soundtrack. Walking off-road here, onto this ground beef path in a little valley, as this dreamlike music kicks in, it's nothing short of magical. And then out of nowhere, it kicks into this. It sounds like this was ripped straight from a 90s corporate presentation video. I can imagine the words synergy and think outside the box accompanying this song on screen. Most of the song is cool and all, but I particularly love the little intro. It's so calming. I want a whole song that's just built off of this part. There's a lot of songs in the game that are amazing. I've already been playing my favorite tracks throughout the video, so go back and listen to some of them if you weren't paying attention to the music. It's such a big part of the experience of this game. It fully solidifies that this is from the 90s. Alright, let's get back to the world itself. You very rarely need to come up here, so I didn't explore this area a lot as a kid. Plus, the paths wind around so much and are extremely narrow, it's just annoying to get around. But the vibes are exquisite. It's secluded away from all the hustle and bustle of this massive city. No paved roads make this area feel more connected to nature. It's really the only place on the island with that kind of vibe. There's a little plateau on this hill. It is very annoying to climb it, and of course there's nothing up here, but there doesn't need to be. I think you do actually have to come here during the final mission of the game, but outside of that, it's a nice little spot. I particularly like this path that cuts through the center of the circle created by the outside path. I'd like to take a walk around this area myself, if I could. Following the path to the southwest takes you to a little peninsula. It's equally as out of the way as the plateau we just looked at, but I think I liked it more. The color palette of the green grass and red ground beef feels more comfy than the yellow sand and blue water. We have one more spot to look at, but let's appreciate this section of the island real quick. You can follow the path to the northwestern corner of the island. You can go straight forward to reach the city streets and continue your journey. Or, you can take a left and go into the unknown. Spooky music kicks in. You walk down the path, lowering an elevation, with your back facing the only way of escape. You see that you're being led underground. Do you follow the game's direction? Do you walk into this mysterious underground cave? Or do you turn around, go back the way you came, and continue on about your life, never to remember this moment again? I know the path I choose. I don't know what it is about this place. This felt so ominous as a kid. The music and environment aren't particularly scary, yet it feels so different from everything we've seen so far. Even the caves during the race don't have the menacing vibe this one does. The dark wall texture, the stalactites and stalagmites, mixed with this being a pretty tiny room, conveys a sense of unease. I think the mysterious, unopenable door plays into that a lot. It harkens back to all those supposed secrets in video games where you need to go through some complex process to unlock something. Like El is Real 2401 in Super Mario 64. This whole fountain feels like it's hiding something. Just like how it feels there should be some way to go through this door and see what's behind it. If you click on it, a pirate will start talking. He'll give you some tips for playing the game or even tell you some details about his personal life. Arr, if that be you again, then listen up, matey. I was born on the crest of a wave. Me mother was a mermaid. Me father was King Neptune, he was. I picks me teeth with a merlin spar, and when I spits, I spit out tar. Now go away and leave me be. I want to meet this guy. But alas, 
you never get to. The pirate living in the mysterious caves underneath Lego Island never reveals himself. If you liked my little tour of Lego Island, check out this other video from me. Head over to my Patreon for a bi-weekly series of me rambling about stuff. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.